If you are dumpling obsessed like I am, then you are going to want to watch these top three dumpling recipes. Number three, Thai prawn dumplings. First up, we're gonna go with our condiments and we're gonna do the garlic oil first. So a little bit of oil into a saucepan. You know, I often find with Thai food, it's the condiments that you add at the end that make everything so special. Now, the oil is sort of warmish and I'm gonna add in my garlic. Now, don't chop it too fine, I want it quite chunky. Now you kind of want to keep the garlic moving and dancing around in here a bit. If you sort of let it sit, you get kind of hot spots in that oil and bits of the garlic will burn. Burnt garlic will ruin everything. Now this is way more garlic oil and crispy garlic than I need for this dish, but I often will use this at the end when I'm stir frying noodles, I'll just drizzle over the top. Or if I've got fried rice, I'll drizzle on top of that. A great condiment to have around. Now the secret here is you want to take it off just before it's done because it will keep cooking in the bowl. I'm going to pour that out and you can see it's still sizzling. Now as that cools down, the garlic chips will become really crispy and a really lovely deep golden colour. Condiment number two, we're going to make a Thai Nam Dim sauce and I'm going to make a green version today. So I've got three big, mildish sort of large green chilies. This is not the chili that I want for the heat. This is the chili that I want for the colour. So slice these down through the middle and I actually want to take the seeds and the white part out of the chilies for this one because that white pith will kind of dilute the really lovely green colour that I'm after. And then I just use a spoon to scrape out the middle part. Okay, now just roughly chop these. They go into my mortar. And the chilies that I want for heat, they're called pekinu in Thai, or bird's eye chilies. And these ones are gonna give us the fire. I want two of those. They go straight in, and some garlic cloves. And then I'm also gonna add some coriander or cilantro root and the root and stem part has lots of flavor and it's often used in these kind of chili sauces rather than the leaves which can tend to have a more sort of bruised herb flavor rather than a fresh coriander flavor and then always when I'm using my mortar and pestle I like to add a little bit of salt not just for the flavor but because it helps to grind down all the fibers in the vegetables and away we go now I'm after a very smooth paste here. You could always do this in a food processor as well, but if you have one of these really heavy mortar and pestles, you'll find it's, a, it's quite easy work because the heavy pestle will do all the work for you. So this is the kind of situation that you're after. And now that I've got my paste, I'm gonna add in some fish sauce, some sugar, and then we want some tang. So I'm gonna add some lime juice. Just sort of push down on that lime, really release all of the juices inside. Now really give that a good mix. I want that sugar to dissolve and the lime juice and everything to form one nice little sauce. Now let's see how we've gone. Mm. Perfect, just a hint of garlic, beautiful spicy chili, but the sweet sort of tang as well. Mm. Perfection. Now the dumplings guys. So I have a couple of little tips here for how to get the exact perfect kind of filling texture that we want. One is going to be about the way we chop the prawns. So I'm going to get all my prawns out here and divide them up. I probably want about two thirds of the prawns in one pile and a third in another pile. And for the two thirds of the prawns, I'm going to really finely mince them, very, very fine. And then the other third, I'm just going to cut into very small little pieces. So this is the texture that you're looking for. And I much prefer to hand mince the prawns rather than put them in a food processor. I just find they turn a bit mushy when I put them in the food processor. So that's those ones. And these other ones, I just want to slice into small pieces. Okay, just run my knife through again roughly. Okay, so we have our little pieces of prawn and then we have our minced prawn into a bowl. And now the secret ingredients for the perfect texture. I kind of want like a really smooth, silky, juicy filling. I don't want it to be really firm and really hard. So I'm gonna add a little bit of chicken stock, which is also gonna flavor the filling, and a little bit of cornstarch, which will help to sort of bind everything together and keep it kind of silky. And I want a little dash of sugar, that's gonna bring out the sweetness in the prawns, a little dash of white pepper, and then quite a good, decent pinch of salt. 
And the next secret part here is the way to mix. You've really got to mix this vigorously. You'll see how the texture of this filling changes as we sort of whip it with the chopsticks. Okay, and you'll see we've got quite a wet mixture here, but it is all sticking together. That's just what we want. So for the wrappers, you're looking for wonton wrappers, and you can find these at your Asian grocer and a lot of supermarkets now. And what I want is a little bit of that filling in the middle. Now the idea here is that we want, yes, a really good amount of really delicious prawn filling, but I also want quite a bit of that wrapper because it's almost gonna be like, I don't know, like a kind of wide noodle kind of texture. So you kind of want a long frilly tail here. And you don't need to be too fussy with the folding for this one, just kind of smush it together. So at this point, you can go ahead and freeze these on the tray. Freeze them on the tray first until they're firm, then you can put them into a bag afterwards. Otherwise they get all stuck together and that's not good for anyone. But I'm gonna cook these straight away. So you just need some boiling water and slide these little guys in. And just as you're putting them in, just kind of give them a bit of a stir, make sure they're not sticking to the bottom. Now what you wanna do with these is cook, plate and eat. They will sort of get a bit firm and a bit sticky if you kind of leave them lying around. But you know, eating some dumplings in a hurry has never been a problem for me. Okay, these are looking good. So just pick them up, drain them straight out onto a plate. And now for our special condiment part. Okay, so a little trick to this. Start with a little bit of the oil first. So leave the garlic chips and just oil up those little dumplings. Then go in with your green chili sauce. Don't be scared of that, we want some spice here. And then finally scoop up some of those crispy golden garlic bits. And they just get sprinkled all over the top. And that, my friends, is one epic dumpling dish. Don't miss this one. Well, it just would be criminal not to try it out. Mm. Combination is so epic. Crispy garlic, juicy pop of prawn, tangy sauce. Mm. Number two, pork and chive dumplings in spicy chili oil. Okay guys, it's time for dumplings. When is it not time for dumplings? I love dumplings, it's like my favorite food group. <laughs> anyway, you can tell I'm very excited. Uh, we're gonna be making a Northern Chinese style dumpling today and we're gonna start off with some garlic chives. So let's talk through the garlic chives. This is what they look like and they add a really distinct flavor, kind of a mix between garlic and spring onion. So you can see these have a very flat leaf compared to the spring onion, which is round. Uh, so you wanna find these guys at your Asian grocer. If you can't get a hold of them, just use spring onion, but just add a little bit of grated garlic in there as well. Really worth seeking them out though. All right, so I just want some small little slices of these. Now for the pork mince, try to get a fattier version of pork mince. If you go with a really lean one, it won't be as juicy or as soft and tender. So add your garlic chives to the pork. And to that we want to add some sesame oil. And then now we need to work on the filling texture. So this kind of Northern Chinese style dumpling to me is a little bit more robust, uh, a bit chunkier, thicker, sturdier than your delicate Din Tai Fung kind of situation, if that makes sense. Um, but we still want quite a bit of liquid in here because we want to make sure that our filling is nice and juicy. So we need to add some chicken stock. I'm going to add an egg as well. And then to give us the right kind of pop or firm texture with the filling, I'm gonna add a little bit of corn flour as well. And then we want a really decent pinch of salt in here. The salt's gonna help with the texture as well as the flavor. And then here's another tip for the filling. You wanna mix this vigorously for at least two or three minutes until your arm feels like it's actually gonna fall off. Not quite like that, but you get the picture. So you can see this is starting to come together. It's very sticky. Okay, so this is the situation that you're looking for. It's almost like a thick cake batter kind of texture. Okay, so now we're ready to fold our dumplings. And I'm using some homemade dumpling wrappers here. You can find the video on how to make these on my YouTube channel if you're interested. You can also use gyoza wrappers from your Asian grocery store. Uh, basically, you're looking for a wheat flour based round wrapper. Okay, so you wanna have quite a bit of filling in here. I want quite a chunky dumpling. And then if you're using store-bought wrappers, you're definitely gonna to need to do this. If you're using homemade ones, probably not because they're a bit more moist. But just grab a little bit of water and just moisten the edges. Fold the top over and then kind of fold and then pinch the sides in. Do the same on the other side. 
and then pinch everything together really firmly at the top. Now I've got to say that even though it's a bit more of a pain to make your own dumpling wrappers, it actually makes the folding process a lot easier. I find that when I do this kind of shape dumpling with a store-bought wrapper, because they're a lot drier, it tends to crack and more easily sort of fall apart. So if you're having trouble with your store-bought wrapper, just do a simple fold over, don't worry about the pleating. Look at these little guys, look how cute they are. Oh, I get so excited about dumplings. Okay, so let's do dumpling sauce before we cook the dumplings. I'm gonna start off with some soy sauce and some vinegar. So I'm just using plain white distilled vinegar here. Now the traditional vinegar would be to use a Chinese black vinegar. It's really hard to get a hold of where I am, so I just use this one instead. But obviously if you can find it, you should add that one. And then this special guy over here, this is my homemade chili oil. You'll see how large the jar is because I just can't get enough of this stuff. You can find a video on how to make this on my YouTube channel. A lot of you guys have made it. I know you love it, which is awesome. Uh, but you can use any kind of chili oil you like. The key here is that this homemade one has heaps of beautiful spices in here, star anise, Sichuan peppercorn, cinnamon. And the key to using a chili oil like this is to make sure you're getting both like the chili powder sediment part as well as the oil itself. So if you have a look, when I take my spoon out, you can see lots of little spices and chili bits in there, not just oil. Now I like mine kind of fiery hot, so I'm gonna add quite a bit of this, but totally up to you how much you wanna add. And to that I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic and I'm just gonna grate that in. Oh, this dish packs so much punch with the chili and the pork and the garlic, but we're also gonna add some spring onion as well. Just give that a mix. Mm. Oh, that's got some kick. So because our dumplings are so chunky and robust, they're gonna take a little bit more technique to cook the filling perfectly, plus keep that wrapper the perfect texture as well. I'm gonna show you how we do that. You need to start off with some rapidly boiling water, lots of it, and then I also want you to keep on hand uh, some really cold water. You need two of those things. Now, dumplings go into the hot water first. Just while that water's coming back up to the boil, make sure you're gently agitating those dumplings, making sure that they're not sticking together or sticking to the bottom of the pan. Now what we're waiting for here are for these dumplings to just start to float up to the surface. So when you can see your dumplings start to float, they're gonna pop up to the top of the water like this. Now I want you to add the cold water. Just a little splash, half a cup or so. So this is gonna slow down the cooking process. And the whole point of that is that if we left them to boil for long enough so that big chunky bit of filling cooks through, then we run the risk of the wrapper on the outside overcooking and sort of disintegrating. So that is why we wanna add the cold water. Now I'm gonna let the water come back up to a boil again, and then I'm gonna add more cold water let the water come back to a boil, and by then, our dumpling filling should be perfectly cooked. All right, so these are looking good to me. I'm gonna get them straight out into a bowl. And now of course we want a beautiful bath of that amazing spicy dumpling sauce. And doesn't that just look like a little bowl of heaven? My goodness. Okay, let's have a look inside and see what our dumpling filling looks like. Ah, oh, look at that, perfect, just with a beautiful whisper of that chili oil. Mm. Mm. The porkiness of that is so amazing and the garlic chives, you can taste everything in there, every little element in there, beautifully shining through and the texture, everything. Ah, so good. Mm, spicy. I think this is like the happiest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> and number one 
top spot is spicy Sichuan wontons. One of the secrets to making these epic dumplings comes with the filling. So I'm going to add a few little extras here to keep the texture really light and really silky. We're starting off with some pork mints and then I'm going to add the flavorings first. So I've got some spring onion and some finely grated ginger and a really good pinch of white pepper. Okay, so now for the bits and pieces that are going to help with the texture of our dumpling, I'm adding a quarter of a cup of chicken stock. You could just use water, but I like to add a little bit of extra flavor, so I'm adding the chicken stock. That's going to keep our dumplings really nice and juicy. And with that, we want a little bit of cornstarch because that's going to bind with that chicken stock liquid and, um, and help with that silky texture. And then we want one egg and salt. And now mix vigorously. We want to really incorporate all of those liquids and that egg and make this a fairly moist dumpling mixture. So that's looking good. Now time to fold our wonton dumplings. Now I always find it easier to do this with a butter knife rather than a teaspoon. A little bit of that mixture into the corner of the wonton wrapper. Fold that over and then just keep rolling until we reach almost the end and then press in the sides and we just want a little bit of water on the edge and we bring those together. So just place those onto a tray just with a little bit of cornstarch on the bottom of it to prevent them from sticking. So you can of course freeze these for later. Pop them into your freezer on the tray and then once they're nice and firm pack them up into Ziploc bags and when you go to cook them just cook them straight from the freezer. And now for that beautiful glistening red dumpling sauce. I'm starting off with my homemade chili oil. Now you can find the recipe for this on my YouTube channel. So head there if you'd like to figure out how to make it. And it really adds such a great flavor to this dish because it's infused with spices like star anise and Szechuan peppercorns and, and cinnamon. So it adds something really special. Make sure you get some of that chili powder as well as the chili oil. And to that I want some light soy sauce some vinegar and then I just want the tiniest hint of garlic so I'm going to peel this clove of garlic and then shave just a few little gratings of that garlic so not even a quarter of that clove and then some finely chopped spring onion and I want some coriander in there as well now I love to finely slice the stems as well as the leaves the stems add some crunch and they also have a really good flavor so don't leave those behind yum this sauce looks and smells amazing let's just have a try mmm that is so good oh that hint of spice mmm perfect the time to drop these into some boiling water now just give those four or five minutes until they're cooked through now these look ready which is exciting because it means that it's nearly time to eat so drain those off Put them straight into a bowl. Oh, and I love that. So that little sort of tail of the wonton is nice and silky, like a silky noodle. And now I'm just going to add a couple of tablespoons of this dumpling cooking water to the sauce that we made because it's become quite a nice little stock actually because of the, all the, those lovely pork juices in there. It's gonna add some extra flavor to our sauce. And now for the magic part just generously give those dumplings a chili oil bath. Mm. If that's not heaven, I don't know what is. Just a little sprinkling of sesame seeds. And that, my friends, is a perfect dumpling dish. Now, the way I think these should be eaten is with a spoon so that every mouthful you get some of that beautiful red sauce plus your little dumpling. Mm. It's so delicious. That sauce adds all these little fresh pops of Szechuan pepper and herbs. And the inside of that dumpling is like a mousse. It's so smooth and soft. Ah, you guys really need to try these. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one, and that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks, guys.